what's up? So, I just listened to this and I wanted to share it real quick. Because this is a, a perfect representation of uh, basically what it means to... It's kind of like the next layer of waking up is you have to... You wake up to what is real. First, first you wake up to what is real and you go through that layer. This is also a shout out to Krista York and very much uh, a uh, inspiration to make this and to synchronistically uh, watch this, which which is uh, how I stumbled upon stumbled upon amongst Krista York and uh, definitely check out her channel. So, we wake up to uh, what is real, we wake up to uh, what we have been taught to believe, which is made up of uh, lies and half-truths. And then we come to a, uh, a level and a layer where we realize these uh, deeper levels of uh, understanding and how uh, to integrate, how to transmute, how to uh, utilize our, our focus, our, our mentality, and our discernment to uh, choose a reality that is in alignment. And I don't, I don't want to use all these fucking new agey terms, but this is just kind of uh, what it is. You align your mind to what is divine and real within, first and foremost, within. This process happens within. This is why uh, I'm out here talking about, <laughs> we out here talking about fasting and realizing what you can really do with deeper levels of engagement and meditation and focus So yeah, this is uh, basically meditation is life. Yoga, like this is the westernized, bastardization of yoga to some extent. But I mean, uh, that's everything's working its way out, people. It's all spiraling out and spiraling in to uh, integration. That's the beauty of it. So yoga is yoking, is melding is uh, homeostasis and that's what meditation is it's a focus you uh, during meditation you are uh, training your mind to retraining your mind to focus properly that's meditation and then you do that eventually always that is the purpose of meditation to retrain your mind To take back control of your mind from going along with bullshit. I, do you ever find that even if you just kind of, you know, my what I refer to as base camp, even if you touch base camp for a second, touch real, touch now for a moment, like just enter that space for a second and go, whoa, right? Like, wow, it's now, it's present, I'm here. For even a split second, and then you don't, and then you get lost in the world, right? But don't you suddenly, is it, are, don't things just kind of click differently right after that? Like, it's almost like there's still this runoff. Do you know what I mean? Like a runoff of, of the correct words and the correct thing to say or the, or, or the correct action to take. Do you know what I mean? I So, uh, what the caller doesn't quite get because you know uh, translating these things into down into the uh, linguistics and, and syntax that we haven't brought up and kind of uh, you lose meaning within the translation but what he was talking about is 
what I was just talking about and how that bleeds into your life because it becomes your life. You get into this attunement process of tapping into the synchronicities and synchronicities and allowing them to happen and flowing with it. And part of this process is is, is uh, having having some some profound moments and experiences in life that, that change us, um, and it can be brought about by uh, you know certain levels of engagement, um, practices of martial arts, of uh, engaging our body to to that kind of level and focus that bleeds into other aspects of your life absolutely It's all about the engagement, so the focus happens. From whatever we attune with and allow. <laughs> Do know what you mean, and it happens mostly that I could recall it in the way that you're saying it. If somebody comes to me and they earnestly want advice, yeah, I'll just try to stop for a second and then what comes out of me is not like I'm not thinking up these words. Right. You know, they just, it just yes. kind of flows out. So yeah, I totally agree. Right, but even if, and, and, but what, and, and yes, totally, Andre just So yes, what I was, what I was going on about. Is that this flow state happens and it, it can be uh, something, you know, a lot of times whenever we go through things in life, uh, It can seem like our world is, uh, you know, crumbling beneath our feet or before our eyes. And even if in the moment we, we uh, at first we don't realize that this needs to happen, eventually, you know, we, we come to like that 2020 hindsight and we realize that that needed to happen so that we could let go of something, so that we could see clearer, so that because of this uh, releasing, we, we are able to get a clearer sense, cleaner vision that translates into every aspect of our beingness. Because so much of our beingness is dependent upon our perception, how we perceive, how we view things, what we choose to engage and entertain, to bear witness to, to allow in. I like to use the the uh, analogy of a pebble on a pond. We can just have it, uh, our perception as that pebble skipping across experiences, across, across awareness, skipping upon the top of the pond. And yes, we can access uh, certain speeds with that and we can be quick but what kind of depth are we really getting with the experience until we can 
still the pebble in our mind and focus, and then the pebble begins to sink down into deeper layers of the waters, of the experience, of the existence, of the reality. So, the, the experience or the initial uh, engagement is like that first ripple of the pebble on the pond. And that 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 first ripple is is going to expand across a vast area of our experience, and then ripple upon ripple, we we begin to understand what's going on. And what you're saying, but even if you were to, like, because it's it's very difficult to hold a conversation while maintaining this very true realization <laughs> that you're here and it's now. Right? I just had that happen. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And but but even if you, I can't do it with everybody though. No, me neither. And but yeah. even if you took like thirty seconds to just do that a moment, and then let's say, okay, let's just use an example. Like, let's say you have like a business <laughs> meeting where that's a very difficult place because. You have a you know a bunch of people and there's a meeting let's say or or whatever it is right, um, and, and and you know that you're about to head into that but if you take thirty seconds to just really get in that potent here now realization space, um, and then you walk into that meeting now you're in the moment you're in the in the in the meeting moment you're no longer in the real true self space like right like you are right. but you know you're not aware of it so you're just like now you're just talking and now you're just, you know, being yourself, doing the regular humdrum reactionary kind of things to say. But except the words that you're choosing are still seem to be so spot on. This is this is the flow state and it just happens. And whenever we we are, uh, you know, in the now moment, but it's just it's just in the in our uh, space of <sighs> tapping into the free flowing place, the space inside where uh, you don't necessarily really think too hard about what is happening it's more just flowing with with the engagement and, and it just happens and that's just kind of and that's just kind of life and that's meditation and realizing the meditation of life you know re realizing how life flows and how we we can flow with it or we can uh, uh, choose to be momentarily momentarily impeded by it if we get caught up in stupid knots and trips and traps and then we eventually release those knots and find the flow again and that is the meditation of life learning how to do this and then flow with it do you know what I mean? Well, that would be something that I would have to try because I haven't ever approached it from that way. Yeah, or at least just to see it. I'm curious to see if anybody else realizes that to be the case. Because I used to think like, oh, what's the point of 45-minute meditation in the morning or something like that? Because I kind of figure, because you don't need it. And that's that's uh, also, you know, uh, what this is all about it is cultivation. So that... Uh, it's not about the time period or the quantity. It's about the quality of every every little aspect, every little thing that we engage and do. It's all about the quality of it. That's going to be vastly more powerful than any quantity. So the time period doesn't matter, but 
being persistent with something matters and so that we cultivate an awareness of it so that we can integrate it into our lives. That is meditation, that is yoga. That is flowing with life. And when it's quiet and you're alone closing your eyes, <laughs> you need that shit when you're in the thick of the world exactly. and you're in it, right? Exactly. But exactly. I, find, I find that 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 even if you do it for a moment or whatever, that moment of realization yes. seems to have this runoff throughout the rest of your day. That's the like point. It's just, there, it's just present. Like your words yes. just more fluid or a little bit more in tune, you know, selective or. Just perfect. Things seem to slow yes. down for me. Mm. Yeah, it's like the, the the interaction seems to slow down when I can get to that place with somebody else. Oh, that's interesting. That is interesting to say. Uh, it's it's also very synchronistic for me personally. Because uh, who? And that gets into some, some deeper levels of uh, my personal engagements with people. Because the slowing down happens because it's a, it's a, an, a refinement of uh, feeling what one truly desires. So it's a tapping into uh, the true signal, the true spark. And so, yes, it can be a slowing down, but then uh, it's kind of like it slows down at first and then and then it's tapped into and then it fucking picks up <laughs> and then it just goes and flows. So, yes, uh, I do agree with that first part, but uh, w once once it slows down and you tap into it, because that, that is absolutely needed with people, uh, we have to kind of like... Uh, Attune with each other on the same uh, wavelength. If if you get my uh, lingo, my linguistics here, and once that happens, uh, the connection is made. Then then uh, it can be very very fast because the the flow is tapped into the connection is made and the feeling has attuned and attached with the mentality and once that happens with communion and communication when we tap into the feeling then we can tap into the emotion of what uh, is, is really being the message be behind the words. So uh, we start, we really tap into what someone is getting at and trying to say yeah, more than the words. And you will be very surprised at just how amazing the difference is between whenever you're tapped into someone, uh, someone's feeling. And then whenever you're just listening to the words, it can be like a recorded message even, and you can be in a certain place where you're just listening to the words and you're not really getting, you know, uh, what they're saying. Uh, it's kind of like you're more turning it into more of an introspective thing at that point. More of a thing of refinement. But then, once you really tap into the feeling, it's a, it's a whole different message. And you tap into the flow of it. It's the same thing as reading books. Uh, you know, you, you can read so many pages, or you can even be in the flow of, you know, a story. And then uh, you get, your mind gets caught up or you start to think about something else, you're still reading it and going through the motions as people do. But you you realize eventually that you you know, you've read a page or two and you're like, ah, what <laughs> what have I just read? You know? So it's a quality here. 
that we're tapping into and refocusing on so that that awareness you know we don't we don't have so many of those uh, skipping things happen you know, within our lives uh, as uh, most people do all right i'm gonna look for the pacing of it and you look for the the, the content and tell me if let's see if we both notice each other what you know, because I don't know that I've noticed it being, like, slowing down, but uh -huh. maybe I'll look for that. And I will, I'll watch the content, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, let's see what happens. That's awesome. The flow, realizing the flow state, realizing how the content, the quality of the experience changes whenever we are within this flow state and we allow it to happen. We are not trying to necessarily be so in control of the creation process but we it's it's a uh, balancing act here you know realizing that we are beings of manifestation and t and also releasing into that tapping into the flow state allowing things to come about instead of being always in control you can't do that otherwise you're going to eventually find yourself back in, inside the box that you were brought up into believing. Okay, so I have a card that I drew. Pretty cool. <laughs> pretty timely, pretty accurate. Uh, it's a, a card I've been thinking of for a while, so uh, it makes sense that I draw it, especially now. With all this talk of manifestation and creation and co creation and realizing. What we can do, what we can do whenever we allow the stuff to flow. Trying to set up the lighting. Okay. Okay. I think we got it. <laughs> the magician. In a rustic tropical temple, a man carries out an elaborate ritual. He moves within a circle ringed with candles and offerings. As he dances, he juggles the symbols of each element with ease. Mysterious etchings cover the walls. So this is like the, uh, the being uh, awakening within the sphere, within their uh, reality bubble, beginning to tap into their abilities and what they have access to. The magician channels spiritual energy through his contact with the divine. He can access immense power and creativity and I say he here, but obviously it's no uh, man used as in human. He directs these energies consciously through the use of his will. The will is a mighty force that can create and transform situations. It is so profound that it is indeed magical, while the fool is spontaneous and Unconcerned with the future, the magician sees the connection between actions and their consequences. Magic has been described 
as the science of hidden relationships. The magician's art is in understanding, anticipating, and working with these relationships. In a reading, this card counsels you to make an active, engaged, and exploratory approach to life with focused attention and clear intention. Your power to manifest is unlimited. So yeah, awesome stuff. Considering what, what we just what we just talked about, and also uh, you know the point here is to like I, like I said, uh, realize the power of your will, the power of creation and manifestation, and realize the power of the fool, releasing into that, releasing into the flow state. So uh, we have to balance these these things. Find find the flow of it, and uh, it's going to be you know different for everyone. We each have our own uh, experience and unique experience that that, that we're going to go through. It's going to be unique for everyone. So remember this, and utilize your talents wisely, and realize when it's time to let go and flow, and when it's time to rein in the, uh, <laughs> the ropes. And the tethers of the mind, the your ability to access a focal point, push and pull here, people. It's expand and contract. In and out. Sun and moon. Engaging both polarities and realizing how they must harmonize with each other. Peace.